Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Gospel of Two Wheels, where the coffee's hot, the bikes are fast, and your comments are absolutely ridiculous. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, Dave Brayman, Todd Colvin, it is great to see you guys here. Uh, sorry I did not get the announcement about this pod or podcast, whatever you want to call this, up uh, earlier like I normally do, so people will probably take a little while to chime in. Steve Becky Peterson, what's going down? Um, yeah, it's great to see you guys all here. That's also why we started a little early so that we can let the computer do its algorithmic thing and get people to know that we're here. Um, yeah, it is awesome to be here, guys. It's actually kind of chilly this morning, but spring has sprung in our valley. Yesterday was absolutely drop dead gorgeous day. Uh, end of the day, I was out, uh, cutting trees on the property <laughs> and chopping things up at the end of the day. And it was brilliant. It was probably... 60 degrees, sunny, dead calm, absolutely amazing. Uh, Thursday night ride, guys, is uh, Peach Valley tonight, so we leave here at 5 sharp. Hey, there's my dad, Scott Spradling. Uh, there is a guy that I cannot pronounce his name. I'm obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously not from the United States, but I'm guessing you're not from the United States. G and then P. I don't know how to say your name, dude, um, but that it's an awesome looking name. Uh, 5280 James, what's going down? There's my mom, Suzanne. Everybody say hi to my mom. If you don't, she'll punch you in the face. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it is awesome, obviously, always to be here. Cody Roberts, Eric Hall, what's going down, man? Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, Thursday night ride, Peach Valley. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to ride. Don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to go ride dirt bikes, and it's going to be awesome. Um, maybe, ah, I knew the air compressor would kick on if I didn't turn it off. There it is. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me just fine and it will go off and we shouldn't hear again the rest of the thing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yes, 609. I love you, Jimmy Nyhart. Just saw an illegally parked frog. Bish got towed. <laughs> oh, so good, dude. <laughs> I love you, Jimmy Nyhart. We need to get together. Um... Oh, here we go. 52A James, great question. Speaking of cutting trees, which bike is getting the saw mount? Uh, it will be the Beta for lots of reasons. Uh, mainly, well, the main reason, honestly, is that uh, since it's carbureted and just has a normal gas tank with a normal petcock and fuel line, I can fuel the uh, saw off the bike. <clears throat> My other bike, I do have the kit to get gas. It's a pain in the butt, though, so... About a mile adventures, what's happening? Um, Jeremy Mullen, how's it going, man? Things are good here. So, yeah, Beta will get the saw mount. I'm going to be using the Enduro Engineering saw mount this year. Uh, Bill Dart actually does make a... Wow, we got a thumbs down. That's funny. Jay Wild, what's going down, dude? Nice work uh, in Las Vegas being such a help. That was rad, dude. Super proud of you. Super proud to call you a friend and a Highland Cycles guy. That was awesome. Um... So yeah, beta gets saw out. The other reason it's getting saw out is it's all set up squishy um, suspension-wise, so it's more fun to ride slow while we're cutting trees and just hanging out. So uh, the KTM is definitely more of a racy bike now, um, and even the tune in the motor and all that is just, I mean, it's fine. I could ride it slow. It's fine, but the beta is just better for that. So, uh, But really the main reason is the fueling off the thing. Uh, yeah, lots of bikes in the shop here. Oh, my thing uh, is not tracking. I don't have it track Here, watch this. I turned off the tracking because it was kind of annoying. Let's see. If I go, no, I'll go away. Sorry. Boom. Lots of bikes in the shop. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we got we got a lot of work to do. And we'll leave it like that. Um, yeah, which is awesome. Uh, keeps me out of trouble. Uh, let's see. Uh, Minnie Riri getting married. I'm locked up till 2025. Right on, Jimmy. That's all right. I'm going to get out there eventually. It's like if I'm cutting trees, my question is, what do you do if you catch your number one competitor cutting the race trail on GoPro? Uh, dude, I call him out, dude. Like, um, hundred percent, like at least go talk to them and be like, Hey, what the heck? And then, um, I, you know, whatever I, cause cutting, cutting the course in a race is like 
I don't know, man. That is the absolute worst, right? Because it's a race. None of us are making money. At least I'm a cycle farm. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you're pro making money. I don't know. But if you are, then it's a really crappy thing to do. But most of us are just racing for a plastic trophy. And to cut the course is just, ah, it's silly. Um, dirt, uh, Rich Pierce, what is going on? Um, even the dirt Karens. Yeah. Oh, man, we had a we had a good one last Thursday night. That was epic. Zach Farkash, good to see you, man. Um, so, yeah, anyway, Smiley Hansen, what's going down, brother? Um, need to get you back out here to ride, too, because, you know, dirt bikes and all that good stuff. <laughs> I got no plans this morning, people, uh, about what to talk about, so you guys just let me know what you want to talk about. In the comments, if you're new here, if you're brand new to the whole gospel two wheels thing, then, um, yeah, it's a live show. We just talk about dirt bikes. It's super fun. Uh, I'm going to move this camera just a little bit so that the oh, other way, other way. The gospel of two wheels is not on my head. There we go. All right. There we go. Um, Niels, what's happening, dude? Haven't talked to you in a long time. Tony Andrews, what's going down? Jason Yates, what's going down? Um, Sheetsy Poo is back, Jimmy Nyhart. Yes, Sheetsy Poo, back in the house. It's awesome to have him. Uh, we miss Rich, but we love Mr. Sheetsy Poo. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's on the next schlog in his classic Sheetsy Poo fashion. Very few words. <laughs> but he's back, and it's really great to have him back. Hey, Brody, what's going down? Scott Schweger, what's up? Um, yeah, Tom Bean from Pacific Time, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's awesome. So, guys, what do you want to talk about? Um, let me know anything. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, anything. Uh, see, oh, so for the people just joining us, I know, like I said, I did not get this announced early enough. I didn't announce it yesterday like normal. Uh, so if you're just joining us, Thursday Night Ride is going to be Peach Valley tonight, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and then... Um, uh, yeah, we're training this weekend. If you guys want to do some hard enduro training, we are going out to Ed Dugan. What's going down, man? Good to see you. Um, we're going to go out to Dry Creek and do some rock crawler trail training. <coughs> Suffer, throw bikes on the ground and all that good stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun because the Moab hard enduro is not this weekend, but the next weekend. So I'm going to go. It's not going to be pretty, but we're going to go do it. And then it's going to be an, an it's going to be an experience. Let's put it that way. Uh, the guy with the name I can't pronounce, you got to tell me where you're from. Um, yeah, I wish I could pronounce your name. Uh, maybe you can tell us phonetically. I have a question regarding the Beta 300. How do you have the power valve adjusted? And any thoughts on how you would adjust it differently based on riding situation? Uh, so right now, um, I have, I've got the stock springs in it. And it's backed out quite a bit. Um, but, I, you know, I haven't messed with it much, to be honest. Like... The bike feels really good, like I like it. Um, and now I've got the gearing sorted out. I'm actually running a 1250 now. Um, that's not because I chose a 1250. It's because at the last race in Las Vegas, New Mexico, I had to switch wheels with my KTM because I wanted a different tire for the turn. Anyway, the KTM had a 50 on it, so I swapped it. Uh, and I actually really like the 50 because I can run in second, third, and fourth more. And first is a super duper crawling thing. So, um, uh, yeah, Jeremy Mullen, 450. Dude, I rode a 450 just here at the shop when we were working on it. It's not how fast these bikes are. It's absolutely out of hand. Um, uh, just for talking sake, my buddy's got the new Bluetooth stuff to work on his 23 Husqvarna FC. Ooh, right on. How's, is that working good? Um, Jason H. Sucky here in upstate New York. I love upstate New York, though. Where are you in upstate? I've spent time in um, Boston Lake, Boston Spa, like Saratoga area. Uh, here we go. Uh, Smiley Hanson. That's a good one. Chat about trail closures coming down in uh, the pipe in some states. Let's do talk about that. Uh, ooh, reserved house for Baja trip in November. Nice, Tom Bean. Nice. Car on Dara guy. What's going on? Um <laughs> Rich Pierce, I love you so much. He says, what dirt bike should I buy? What kind of oil should I use? And what's the best tire for all conditions? God, I love it. Um, the, Mark Rogers, what's happening? Uh, I can't make peace. Dang, Nathan Looney, get your butt out here. 
<clears throat> Bjork off road, and we're gonna get to the trail closure thing. I'm just getting through all these. Got a lot of comments. Chainsaw carry for the TBI enduro bikes. My E E is not gonna fit with the computer and some creative engineering. Uh, so Bjork, that's a good question. I don't know if Bill Dart. You should look at Bill Dart because I heard someone fixed. Uh, a Bill Dart to work with the new TBIs, but Bill Dart makes the best. It's the best mount, period. Like the EE one is fine. It works, blah, blah, blah. Bill Dart mount, hands down the best. So check him out, see if he's got uh, an update. Um, ooh, so 609 Enduro, which is Jimmy Neihart. How you like that ERM thing? Does it give Diag values? Yes. Um, I love the ERM thing. Uh, it does show Diag values. You can set uh, TPS voltage. You can set throttle position like that's the throttle position sensor but then you can set the throttle position with like idle and stuff like that and you can read all your codes you can clear codes it's sweet uh i sent that message on fb with the insta 360 with the youtube link for my first ride the local h3 250 rx is definitely different from my ktm oh yeah right on dude um yeah i haven't actually watched that so um so oh from iceland guban poor i don't know, wish i could say it from i dude I need to get to Iceland. I've actually landed and taken off from Reykjavik once on my way to Paris. Um, so I hope I die. So yeah, my power valve is, I mean, I don't know. It works really good. I should play with it more, but I like the way it works. <laughs> Anyone from Iceland has to be a cool dude for sure. It's not like crazy out here right now. Jeremy Mellon, that sucks. Punk Rock Club, Calvin Jones, what's going on? Seems to be not every dealer is willing to help unlock and help with setup. Uh, Willie cycle in Georgia has been the most help uh, for him so far. The total cost is around 300 Right on. So where did he get uh, cycle farm? Where did he get the, the, the module that plugs in? I, I would love to know that because I know that they, you know, KTM was trying to make it work or is he using the Bluetooth from the brand new bikes? That's okay. So tune us in. And let's do talk about trail closures, as Smiley Hansen was mentioning. Um, let's talk about trail closures. Uh, Utah is getting out of hand. So is this western part of Colorado. Uh, I honestly think it's a lame duck president thing going on. Um, we've got Biden in office, uh, and he's clearly incompetent doesn't know so he's got all these people behind him i don't think he even knows what day of the week it is but uh and they're trying to do all these things to like help bolster their uh chance here in this election year and so they're like swiping the pen on a whole bunch of crap uh that is horrible and anyway uh so yeah it's uh it's a real uh pain in the butt and uh, the dolores thing it's funny, who, Terry Webb, by the way, what up? Um, <clears throat> the the Dolores thing, they're trying to close down like 500,000 acres, 400,000 acres of the Dolores um, River Basin. And it's, <laughs> the motorized users are obviously upside, but so are the locals. The ranchers, miners, fishermen, everybody is just exploding about that. And they should be because it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, the, uh, yeah, Jason Yates, fair enough. I get it. Um, the, it doesn't matter. It's a puppet anyway, but the, <laughs> as Brayman said, um, so yeah, I, the, here's my thing. And I, maybe this is uh, I shouldn't say this as a influencer, <laughs> whatever. I don't care. Um, all they're doing to me is making me an outlaw because I'm not obeying rules like that um, that are not decided on by people who actually know what's going on. Like, you know, the CPW, Forest Service, BLM are not being considered. They're just like a president, pres in, you know, somewhere in a white tower is doing something they don't even know anything about. So, um, yeah. So I'm not following those rules anyway. Uh, and then the Utah thing, the San Rafael swell doesn't make any sense at all to me either because what harm is anyone doing um, in the San Rafael swell, like riding dirt bikes on a rock? I, I, doesn't, I had a great conversation with a customer who is uh, definitely not like, a, he's not like me, <laughs> like super far right leaning conservative guy. And uh, he's like, it's the stupidest thing. Like who cares in 10 years, 20 years, 
two hundred years, like it, like it doesn't make any difference uh, that a dirt bike rode over a certain thing. So yeah, it's super frustrating. Um, and as I said, all it's going to make me is be illegal. So there we go. Uh, Twenty one beta two fifty RR runs great, great power, but at an idle, it'll make a funk sound. Intermittent does it more when cold. Uh, Kenneth Corsi, that's interesting. Um, so it might be that thunk sound might be a uh, detonation or pinging. Um, <clears throat> Deb Jorgensen. Uh, especially if it's cold, because your bike needs more gas when it's cold, right? So um, it could be that it's a little bit lean. <clears throat> not terribly lean, obviously. I'm sure it's not. Um, the uh, the um, So if it's lean, especially, like I said, when it's cold... It might be pre-detonating because it's getting a little hot in there, a little hot spot, and boom, and making a thunk that way. Um, because, yeah, I don't know for sure. It's hard to say, but like my my guess is that that is probably what's going on. Um, is that you just have it a little bit on the lean side, maybe um, close that air screw down a little bit and see if that changes it. Also, bump your pilot. Uh, it, says, it says if it's doing it at idle, um, it's probably your pilot circuit might be a little lean. So try that. It sounds like a lean detonation. Uh, Minnesota has some nasty legislation in the committee hearings at the moment. Control of the three branches. Yeah, dude, it's... Ah. And Hanson, I couldn't agree more. For the love of freedoms, now is when we need to stand up. 100%. Now It's like, we got to vote right. We got to get our message out there. It's, it's out of hand what's happening right now. Uh, Michael Sikor, what up, brap? Um, has your Hanson, my beta 300 RR has that as well. So Smiley, what's your jetting? Um, I'm up. Mine does not do that. Um, and my pilot is up from stock. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tom Bean. Yes, we deal with BLM, not allowing, adding building trails here in Western Oregon. People working for BLM have no clue about riding, let alone building trails, etc. Yeah. And actually, we just had a, in my opinion, a great loss <laughs> here at our BLM office. Our BLM office is really great. Um, they've been very pro multi use, very pro racing, very pro dirt bikes, every you know, horses, everybody, right? They're just really, really great. And one of our one of the trail guys there, um, sadly just took another job with the BLM as a uh, safety person and uh, it bums me out because he was a trail organizer and a really great guy um, speaking on behalf of dirt bikes and dirt bikers in a lot of ways and uh, he moved I mean he's still in the BLM whatever but he now he's a safety officer so he won't be in part of that so I really super duper hope that the person that fills his position is also pro multi-use um, that's the problem. It's a human thing, right? Um, there for a long time, our BLM office had a whole bunch of people that were way pro multi-use. Uh, they built a giant parking lot specifically so they could have a race there. Like a lot of things, right? That were really, really great. Um, Peach Valley is an amazing example of how pro moto, um, they have been. Uh, I mean, we've got a mini supercross track, a little tiny mini, mini bike track, a training area that's just fenced off with flat, some stuff to practice on, um, an enduro cross track, gazebos, bathrooms, grills, like it's really nice. Um, so I really hope that we get more BLM people that are pro moto here because if not, it's going to be an uphill battle. Uh, yeah, uh, Jason Yates, better days to come. Just buckle up. I, I'm, I'm with you, Jason. I agree. I think better days are coming. The pendulum is swinging. Uh, North Carolina is very anti off road. Most of the trails and parks are private owned and do very well. Those issues are horribly managed. Um, yeah, I agree. If we don't, no, we'll lose what we've grown <clears throat> to used to having in our backyard. I blame California. Fair enough. <laughs> Smiley Hanson, my beta jetting is stuck only when it's cold for the first minute. Just don't rev it for the first. Oh, so Smiley, that's probably what it is. Um, I, you should actually try a bigger pilot. My bike. I mean, I'm even up in elevation from you, and I went with a bigger pilot. It makes a big difference. It's good. Um, how noisy can a 350 get before you should start checking valves? Bag of wrenches or barrel of bolts? Starts fine every day, but, man, it's loud. Moto <laughs> Creek, that's a great question and a really, really great way of uh, phrasing it. Um, so 
Uh, yeah. So the valves aren't going to get loud on your 350. Valves on modern bikes don't generally get loud unless something horrible has happened and like you've run out of oil and it's wearing down the cam. Because uh, overhead cam valve trains don't generally get loud. They get quiet, actually. So if it's super loud, it's probably something else. That has improved uh, uh, for us too. Bill M has a guy pretty old school that rides. Nice, Tom Bean. That's the key. Uh, Jerry Kendrick, shop looks busy. Yes. How do you balance working on bikes, running your business, riding and testing, family time? Jerry Kendrick, that is a phenomenal um, uh, question. So how, that, yeah. Uh, I, if you guys want to hear about that, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. I'm a very busy man. I'm, I don't have a lot of downtime. Um, the way I do it though is I prioritize. Uh, I my priori- prioritize God first. Uh, and then my family is right underneath that. Um, and they are absolutely the most important thing in my life. Uh, along with prioritizing God and Jesus, I prioritize my mental health. So, uh, because that's how I stay in a good relationship with Jesus and with my family. So mental health is, is writing, right? Uh, I, I got to ride, uh, to not go absolutely crazy. Uh, and either like, on my dirt bike or my bicycle or just physical activity is really important to me. I can actually go for a hike and feel really, really good as long as I push myself. So, um, yeah. And then honestly, the bottom of the, the bottom of the list is money and work. Right. So, um, you know, as long as I have enough money to do the things I want to do, then I'm good. I am very, very fortunate that I put some real effort into this YouTube channel early, like, well, it's not early. Actually, it was super, super late in the YouTube world, but like years ago, that has now afforded me a way to. Um, I get a lot of free parts. I get a lot of. Um, I get paid to do these things. I get, you know, anyway. So um, that really helps with my time for writing because I can ride because it's work, right? Um, I also really enjoy the YouTube thing. I absolutely love making these videos and talking to you guys um, and just making the videos around the shop, making the videos, testing things. I really, really enjoy it. Like everything from filming it to editing it to publishing it to watching it and answering questions and things like that. So um, I'm very fortunate that way. I'm also very fortunate in the fact that I love working on these things. So when I come to work, it's... It's a lot different than a lot of people. I don't, uh, um, yeah, I don't dread it. I, I, I love getting up. Actually, my wife and I had our uh, a little mini date night last night, and she was telling, she's like, I'm so proud of you for loving work. Uh, and she's proud because she knows it's a decision. It's not a thing that just happens. Um, and so, uh, and I'm like, yeah, I, I do love work. So, um, yeah, there you go. Uh, and then, I'm also very lucky that my kids love to ride, so riding is family time too. And my my now my wife is going to ride, which is awesome. Um, we're going to do the Rim Rocker Trail. She's always not always, but she's known how to ride a dirt bike for a long time. She's not into it um, because she didn't like the aggressive trail riding that my boys and I do. But um, she really likes being outside. She, I mean, she's an ex forest forest firefighter. Um, Forester, like anyway, she's just spent most of her life outside. Uh, she's one bad woman <laughs> when it comes to being outside. Uh, so she loves that, and she likes sightseeing, and she loves riding on the back of a motorcycle with me. So this year, she's like, I want to do some like adventurey kind of thing. So we're gonna take the two strokes, and we're gonna ride to Moab and camp out. And it's gonna be awesome. So yeah, I'm very lucky, very fortunate, but I've also put a whole lot of work into it. Um, I'm gonna have to skip lots of things. Uh, what BLM are you talking about? <laughs> Matthew, I think you're joking, but definitely the original BLM Bureau of Land Management. The other BLM stole that. Um, the, uh, how the Weeby KX. Oh, Jay Wild. So the Weeby KX, it's done. Well, uh, anyway, it's done. I know it doesn't look done because we don't have the, uh, plastics, but the plastics and graphics are, um, with, um, MJ. Oh, soon to be with him. Anyway, MJ's getting those and putting those on. So the bike is actually done. It's got a brand new motor crank up, new cylinder, um, new tires, new chain sprockets, uh, suspensions completely serviced. It is ready to rock and roll. Um, like inside outside, not so much. You can see it. 
Um, but yeah, no, it's ready to go. MJ's picking it up this Saturday and uh, it will be ready to go. And what that is, guys, if you don't know, is that is a uh, loner bike or first time racer bike for a kid that um, and a family that maybe is thinking about getting into racing and thinking about uh, dirt bikes. And Weeby is going to provide them a bike and gear and all that stuff so they can come to a race and have fun uh, and try it out without having to throw down a bunch of money. Um, Jason Yates, stupid New York weather. Right on. Congratulations on the new bike. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. About a mile adventures. Uh, tilt locked. Oh, KTM 350. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, the, yeah, I mean, 350s are usually pretty tough, but yeah. Uh, upstate New York, sweet two day deal sport hand. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I'm just going to have to skip, um, a lot of this guys i'm sorry 23 ktm 300 bogs under load and that wide open throttle acts like it's banging off the rev limit. any thoughts randy hatch's bike um jared i don't that's weird if it bogs under load um sounds like something's off with the mapping because that's because he has an xc i know randy um so i don't know tell him to call me that's weird um Thank you guys for all the nice words. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, so Jason Yates, PA, Pennsylvania. Dirty Dabbers Ride is coming up too. Uh, too many roads for me. So yeah, like, and it's funny. So let me just say something about the too many roads deal. I think it's funny. I mean, if you're out looking for single track, go ride single track. I get it. But I laugh every time that like I'm on a ride with someone in a place I don't know. And we have to go down a road for a mile or something like that. And uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry about the roads. Dude, <laughs> dude, if I'm on a motorcycle of any kind, I'm a happy man. And I, I had a guy explain it well because I did the same thing. Like we were up in Crested Butte. We rode down a road for like a mile and a half or two to get to this next trail. I'm like, hey, sorry about the roads. He's like, he's like, stop it, Morgan. Anybody who is complaining about riding on roads during a dirt bike ride, is a sad, sad person. And I'm not saying that to you um, because it sounds like it's a more of a dual sport ride and that's not what you're looking for. But like, <laughs> it's like, if you can't be happy on a motorcycle, then I can't help you. Um, and that, that, like I said, that is not a cut on you, Jason, at all. I get, you know, if you're choosing to go on a ride and you choose not to do a bunch of roads, that's totally understandable. But like having to jump on a road every now and then is, yeah. Sean Robb, greetings from New Mexico. Greetings, man. Uh, Matthew Cooley is looking to buy a new bike for my son this year. We're looking at a 125. What would you recommend? Uh, Matthew, I highly recommend YZ125s. Um, they are absolutely brilliant motorcycles. They're relatively inexpensive. There's one right there. Uh, it's a 23125X. We just jetted it. It rips. Um, great bikes in stock form. They're really good. Uh, we be racing. You bet, buddy. Thank you for everything you do in the community. I really appreciate you and your series of racing. It is awesome. <clears throat> the uh, yeah, yeah, Jason. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I just get I get so tired of people like throwing fits. You know, on it. They're out on this bitching ride. Like everything's awesome, and then you got to jump on a road. They're like, oh, road. I'm like, what is your problem? Like, <laughs> dude. Like, whatever. Anyway, so, yeah. But I know that's not what you're saying, Jason. I know that's not what you're saying. Um, so, yeah. Oh, hold on. Guys, I got to show you this. Look at these my kids. That's my kid from forever ago. Look how cute he is. <laughs> and I'm getting a mess from Travis Flateau. Um, I did, like, this thing on my um, uh, phone where you can, like, it'll just choose random pictures. It's been, honestly, a blessing. Because I get pictures of my kids when they're old. Or younger, old old pictures, and like it's just amazing. <clears throat> Tony Borian, I'm so excited. This is his last Thursday up in Steamboat. Can't wait to be a regular on Thursday Night Rides. I also can't wait. Uh, that was so fun last week, dude. Cannot wait. It's going to be awesome. Stoked you're moving away. Not stoked you're moving away from Steamboat, but stoked you're moving here because it's a rad place. Um, Matthew Coolidge, yeah, just ride, 100%. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I – and. Yeah, anyway, like, yeah, I'm not trying to cut on anyone about the whole road thing, except for the, well, I'm trying to cut on the people that are whiny pants about it. I'm like, just, just like, yeah, just go, just go ride and smile, man. 
<laughs> it's awesome. So, uh, what other questions you guys got? I do need to shut this thing down. Uh, relatively close to eight o'clock. We don't have to do right at eight o'clock, but I got a set of suspension to valve. Um, we got a set of Del Saggio spheres and a stock shock on a 23 450XC that our good friend Adam Digby is racing this coming weekend in um, a Hare and Hound. So uh, he's excited. Uh, he's been watching a lot of our stuff and talking to other people that have TBT valving in their suspension. And he's like, yeah. I want that. Uh, he likes to go fast. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. Anyway, I'm excited, but it is a ton of work. So, um, and he's picking it up today and he's racing this weekend. <laughs> so we have work to do. <laughs> um, and then obviously all of this. Um, yeah, longer wheelies. I like it. <laughs> so I'll take a few more questions. If you guys got more questions, sorry, if I missed anybody, I can let me go back here and see. Um, if I missed any questions and, and yeah, Jared, we'll, I have to talk to Randy about that. That is a weird one. Um, da, 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 da. see Becky Peterson peace out. Um, yeah. What other questions? Oh, I got to do my job here because, um, Rocky mountain is very good to me. And I tried this last night. Um, I did not put it up against SC one. I know everybody wants that and that's coming. The um, uh, Doug Jorgensen, do you think TBT can work on my YZ400 shock? I think so. I have to ask Travis, he's done some vintage stuff. Um, so yeah, this stuff, guys, $4.99 a can. You can only buy two cans right now because I think they're getting a run on it. $4.99 a can. It's very, very similar to SC1. It smells like cherries, which is awesome. Uh, and it's 50 state compliant. That's interesting. I don't know how they got that past California. Cause it does have a propellant in it, <laughs> but, uh, um, this thing, it's really, really good. Um, so use the link in the description, Rocky Mountain ATV MC, buy some of this. They have a whole nother set of chemicals and stuff coming. Uh, I will be talking about that too. So far. I really like that. I used it just on the fender of my KTM and it was awesome. Um, see, uh, I love you, mom. I love you. Uh, I get the road thing, but you're right. Being on a bike of any kind is happiness. hundred percent. What about hose kits? Samco are super expensive. Any other options? Uh, Jason Yates, I, there's not moto hose. If they make one for your bike. Um, I think they're a little less money and they're pretty good. B class enduro rider about to race my first hair scramble. Should I be worried about the start? GVN eight, eight. Um, don't be worried about the start. Uh, especially B class, you're pretty safe. C, <laughs> it's a little bit, it's a little bit scary on the starts. Um, but uh, yeah, don't be no, don't be nervous. Just go ride. Um, I, I guess my biggest piece of advice would be, don't get caught up in trying to be the first to the first turn unless you are. Like if you, if when the flag drops or rate, whatever the how they start it, and you get like the jump then absolutely freaking pin it and get the hell out of there. Um, if you don't get the jump and you're jammed in the pack, calm down. Just calm down uh, and let it all happen. Stay out of trouble. And go pick them off later. Um, but yeah, don't be don't be nervous about it. They're, they're scared. Just, just go have fun. Uh, Black Bike Co. Which gear oil? Um, dude, yeah, 80 weight, hands down. Gear saver, Bell Ray gear saver, 80 weight, synthetic. Put that in there. Don't use anything. Or 75 weight. Depends. Whatever. I use the 80 weight. They're both fine. Um, the 1550 works, but it's super notchy and crappy. 80 weight gear saver. Awesome. Oh, there you go. Terry Webb. He's been a TBT guy longer than me. Absolutely. YZ400. We can take care of you. Roger Hurd. You slept in. What's happening, man? Um, Tusk the T35. Great tires. 100%. I agree. I like them very, very much. What kind of change? Counter shocks, you're terrible. <laughs> uh, Morgan, any advice on 22 KTM 150 SX air fork stiff as board? Grinson's bike, he's only 140 pounds. Tom Bean, man, 140 pound person on air forks is real hard to make that work because you can't just keep dropping air pressure. Eventually, the things won't work like they're supposed to work. Um, so, uh, my biggest suggestion to saving my, my biggest suggestion is. 
chuck that and put like drop real cartridges in there, whether it be 6500s, Del Sazios, KYBs, whatever, that's a lot of money. Um, the best thing you can do for that is put some just motor oil, like 1040, 1550 motor oil in the Schrader valve that is the air spring. Um, that will help with the stiction in there. Just put like five or six cc's, not a whole bunch. That will help with the stiction in that and help it a little bit, but it won't make it great. Um, so when can you talk about the rear tire you're running and what's going on there? Uh, the, well, the tire I can talk about, but I think you're talking about the the weird rimlock thing. Not yet. June, I hope. Uh, Motor Creek, have a great day. Jason, it's, um, yeah, same code. Doug Jorgensen, or Doug W., what's up? Boom. Um, yeah, Doug, bring that sucker down. We'll, um, thing. So, short bus and Daryl, uh, good morning. Have you tried the slick products? Protect and shine. It works well and smells like bubble gum. I have not. I've tried Slick Products uh, soap and it works great. Yeah, practice starts. That's a good idea. On back to the guy I asked about starts. Um, the uh, Jason needs. So my problem with Simple Green is I've seen Simple Green uh, ruin aluminum. It, it will eat aluminum sometimes. Any of the companies out there that have designed electric start? No. Not that I know of. Travis keeps texting me. I don't know what he's saying about. Um, I'm going to turn that off. Um, former professional rider, the advice Morgan gave you regarding the start is top notch. Stay calm, ride your race. Yeah, thanks, Herlo. Yeah, just calm. And don't, like, it's a hair scramble, man. It's probably an hour and a half, two hours, three hours long. The start is helpful. If, you know, I mean, it's helpful. But if it's your first hair scramble, I'm guessing you're not going for the overall. Maybe you are, and, and I hope you are. Um, but if you're fast, you're going to get it. Ooh, here we go. Weeby Racing, great question. Tire selection for Farmington Weeby. The, the Dunlop MX-14 is going to be the tire to have on the back. It's If you guys don't know, it's a sand tire, big scoop tire. That thing is going to be an absolute banger in Farmington because Farmington's a ton of sand. Uh, front tire, kind of whatever. If you've ridden a lot of sand, you know that it's uh, the front tire matters, but not that much. Uh, I'm going to be running a T35 front and an MX14 rear, so that's what I'm running. Um, they are not cheap, but they are amazing in the sand. Uh, the problem is then you have a sand tire that you have nothing else to do with all year long, at least for me. Um, although it might be kind of fun to go climb some adobes with it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, uh, I'm going to put it on my extra wheel, run it, uh, and then probably take it right back off. And then I'll probably, like I said, just go out and climb some giant hills in Peach Valley <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, MX-14 or any other sand tire. The MX-14 is just currently the best sand tire out there i think so it's rad um i i actually ran the kinda um sand mad and it was good oh uh big chuck any update on the takamoto fuel pump fix not yet i am still waiting i know that the uh um I know that the only holdup right now, it's not the product, whether or not it's working, all that stuff. It has nothing to do with that. It's 100% ready to go. It's their patent attorney. <laughs> so he is working with the patent attorney, trying to get that sorted out. Um, that is the holdup right now. So hopefully very, very soon. Um, I should be getting one. In fact, I'll text him and ask, but hopefully, hopefully soon. Uh, what ki fan kit would you recommend for a YZ450, Matthew Coolidge? Um, ah. I don't know. I mean, Trail Tech probably is a very, very good one. Uh, Extreme Parts might make one that works. I don't know. Um, I would look at Extreme Parts and see if they have one. I'm not sure. Um, ooh, Doug Jorgensen. Here we go. For the Broke Racers, the Wig Racing Sand Scoop worked pretty good. There you go. Um, Roger Hurd, uh, Cheap Sand Tire, Kenda 760. That might be the Sand Mad that I ran. I'm not sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I forget what the number is because the kenda has like you know the parker this and the track master but they have numbers that go with them so i'm not sure um oh there you go dave bremen uh what year yamaha has a kit there you go matthew um yeah wr oem fan there you go um so and it, obviously oem is not i mean wrs did not have fans for a lot um 
Uh, it's a clownfish. There's a race in Prescott, Arizona. You should check out some of your camp wood in May. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, oh, Matthew Coolidge, 18. I had a y an 18 YZ450. Uh, I never did put a thing. Um, uh, ooh, Tony Borian. That's a good one. Tell Takamoto to let Highland Cycles fans pre-order the new fuel. Tony, you're a brilliant man. Um, I like that idea. I'm going to get a hold of him right now I'll, after we get off of here. Um, Tom Bean, how did those Tusk Dual Sport tires? I've never used the Tusk Dual Sports. I've used their, obviously, the T35s and the Talons. I like them. Um, <laughs> Daniel Sykes, best chain for a CRF 125F considering all the six horsepower they make. Uh, get a uh, primary driver a Tusk chain, man. Honestly, they're cheap and they're great. Um, Dave Brayman, there you go. Rocky Mountain carries it. Um, perfect. Uh, guys, I need to boogie. Uh, Daniel, I love that question. Yeah, I'd get it. To, honestly, so all, uh, it's funny, Todd York, he, I don't think he watches my stuff anymore because I gave him too much of a hard time. He was uh, giving me a really hard time about running some Tusk uh, uh, sprockets and chain on my uh, 650 for going to Mexico. Dude, those things haven't moved a bit. Like, I pre-ran like crazy in Mexico. My kid's been riding the crap out of that thing uh, since then. And it has been brilliant. Like, so, I'm a big fan. And it's not the primary drive. It's uh, um, the, uh, it's the Tusk chain and then primary drive sprockets. But anyway, yeah, been awesome. So, anyway, guys, I got a boat. Oh, Daniel Sykes, O-ring. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can get an O-ring for it, get an O-ring for it. Because, like, they'll last longer and... You're not trying to build a race bike out of that little 125F. Or may, if you are, you're building a, a nice, slow, reliable race bike, so who cares? Um, but the horsepower, like you said, uh, but the O-ring chain lasts so much longer, so yeah. Um, great. Guys, I got to boogie. I love you guys so much. Punk Rock Club, you know I love you the most. Members, thank you so much for being members of this uh, channel. Guys, if you want to support this channel on a monthly basis, YouTube memberships, Really does make a big difference to me. Um, we're growing that side of it. Um, guys, things are going really well. Uh, stay tuned for the know-it-alls thing. Um, I'm offering one-on-one um, -on -one FaceTime with me uh, to answer questions and things like that. I'm going to have to really shut down the phone calls and emails because it's becoming unsustainable. Jim Nash, <laughs> yes, what's up? Uh, good to see you. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I cannot thank you enough. Um it means the world to me that you guys financially support me. Also, please use our sponsors, Rocky Mountain ATV, all the sponsors in the, the list below. Um, Onyx Off-Road, if you haven't used our thing. Anyway, it means a ton. I really could not be more grateful. I'm not that guy like, oh. I, I seriously, it means a ton. Ask my wife. I talk about it to her all the time and how, how grateful I am. So I love you guys so much. Get out, spread the gospel of two wheels. And as always, I desperately hope that what you guys, or what, excuse me, ha, I messed it up. What we're doing is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes.